What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. We just got a ton of new Pokemon announcements just dropped on us today with a Nintendo Direct this morning, and then a Pokemon trading card game announcement from Pokemon.com. New Sword and Shield expansions coming in the spring and then in the fall of 2020. The Isle of Armor and the Crown of Tundra, very cool. New Pokemon, we've got Galarian, Slowpoke, this guy, that guy, this legendary who's got Triforces on its neck, a bunch of cool new characters, as well as this guy who is named Mustard after a condiment. Uh, that is awesome. I love all the new Gigantamax Pokemon, including this bowl cut Venusaur, and of course, the new forms of some of your favorite legendaries. We've got like a Galarian Zapdos too. There's just so much cool stuff to unpack, including this new Slowking, whose face we apparently are not allowed to see yet, but I am very excited for him when he does eventually come out. With this, there were a lot of new Pokemon trading card game announcements on Pokemon.com released as well, including the much-rumored first turn rule. That is going to be changed. The first turn rules are going to be changed starting on February 21st, 2020, the date when Pokemon Sword and Shield becomes legal for tournament play. And it says here, the player who goes first cannot play a supporter card on the first turn. Their rationale says this change is an attempt to make it less of an advantage to go first. Some strategies may benefit when the player goes second, but others might work out better if the player goes first. We hope this results in interesting choices in both game play and deck building. And I have to say that it is a reasonable decision to make this first turn rule go into effect. Previously, going first in the Pokemon trading card game was just objectively better. I can't Think of very many, if any at all, situations where choosing to go second was optimal. There were a couple throughout the history of the trading card game. Uh, sometimes in very aggressive one prize mirror matches like the Night March mirror or the Zapdos mirror, choosing to go second could net you a win if you take a knockout every single turn. Outside of those unique scenarios, choosing to go first was always correct. So I think this rule will change that a little bit. Some decks that want to use supporter cards to set up, maybe using cards like Bridget or Professor Elm's Lecture or Professor Oak's Setup, right? Cards like that will only really be playable on the second turn of the game. And I think it will more or less impact the usefulness of these turn one setup supporters in the first place. Cards like Lily, I think, are going to be completely outclassed. And other cards like Welder and Green, some of those decks may choose to go second rather than go first if they want to play their supporter cards on the first turn of the game. I think that we will see a general decrease in play of these setup supporters, though, since they can only be used half the time, uh, especially if other players are choosing to go second. A lot of setup decks don't really want to go second. They want the advantage of going first. Decks like Malamar. Malamar wasn't playing uh, Professor Elm's Lecture anyway, so it didn't really matter. It was playing setup supporter like Lily. I think that's probably just going to be changed over to the new Professor cards that we are getting. Uh, professor's Research, I think that Lily is pretty much just going to be outclassed by Professor's Research from now on. And apparently, all of the Professor's cards that discard and draw seven, they are all getting renamed to Professor's Research effectively, right? So Professor Sycamore and Professor Juniper uh, obviously cannot be played in the same expanded deck in the same way. Professor Research cards, uh, this one in particular, Professor Magnolia, cannot be played in the same deck as your expanded deck featuring Professor Juniper or Professor Sycamore. And I think in an attempt to make that easier to understand or digest, they are just going to, from now on, rename all of these discard draw seven supporters that they come out with for future generations, professors research, and then have the, you know, name of the professor kind of in, uh, you know, italics there on the side, just so that you can see who the character is, which makes sense. But the turn one rule is the biggest news of this announcement. I think that 
Generally speaking, it's going to make Jirachi a much more played card than it already is. If Quick Ball didn't already kind of cement the fact that Jirachi is going to be one of the best consistency cards in our upcoming Sword and Shield format, the fact that you can no longer play a supporter on the first turn going first just furthers that argument. And I think that Jirachi is going to be in almost every single deck with uh, maxed out copies of Quick Ball. Speaking of Quick Ball, I'm going to take another tangent real quick. A lot of cards did get card erratas. We've got Energy Retrieval now allowing you to do up to two basic energy cards. I'm going to come back to these later, but Quick Ball, the one from Diamond and Pearl, Majestic Dawn, and Diamond and Pearl, Mysterious Treasures, they got an errata to match the new Sword and Shield text of Quick Ball, meaning that these old Quick Balls are playable. Now, if Pokemon would just do the same thing for my old Rockets Rainbow Energies, that'd be great because I would love to play those at tournaments. And if you can errata the Quick Ball, why can't we errata the old Rockets Rainbow Energies? Just my thought. I know you're listening, Puka, please. Anyways, the first turn rule, Jirachi is going to be an all-star. Quick Ball is going to be in almost every single deck. And my argument for that is that on the first turn going first, you could still set up your deck using Jirachi's Stellar Wish, grabbing trainer cards from the top five cards of your deck, finding cards like Quick Ball using Switch, you know, another Stellar Wish, find more Quick Balls, things like that. I think that decks are going to have very explosive setup engines using Jirachi and Quick Ball and are going to use that strategy to help find their basic Pokemon on the first turn going first without playing draw supporters. And I think that that is going to be a way to more or less circumvent the need for a draw supporter on the first turn going first, the use of Stellar Wish, and also the use of Data Change on Dedene, who is also searchable via Quick Ball. So I think the major thing here is that Quick Ball is going to be a deck that is seen in almost every single deck. It's going to be used to search out Jirachi and Dedene, who are both very good consistency Pokemon for the game and who are going to help us to be able to play around that first turn supporter rule. Now, some decks will choose to go second. I think that, you know, Welder decks looking to get a lot of energy into play early are, you know, possibilities for choosing to go second. Green's Exploration decks also possible for choosing to go second. And decks that, uh, that really want to make sure that they get that turn one supporter can choose to go second rather than leave themselves vulnerable. Because if you go first and you are not able to find too many basic Pokemon, you do run the risk of getting benched out by a more aggressive deck that is able to attack on the first turn going second. So you either want to play a deck that can still search out a lot of basic Pokemon on the first turn going first, maybe get a valuable energy attachment. Any deck playing the tag call engine can easily tag call for a supporter for next turn, a Pokemon, attach an energy, and sometimes that's all you want to do on the first turn going first anyway. So it's not going to be that much of a loss. But uh, you want to make sure that you're playing enough Quick Balls, enough Tag Calls, things like that to search out Pokemon so that you're not getting benched out. We also have weaknesses and resistances changing. This is news that we have seen uh, coming. As we got the scans for the Zacian and Zamazenta V cards, we see their resistance is minus 30. For the foreseeable future, the resistances are going to be minus 30, which I think just makes sense since the Pokemon's HP are now much, much higher than they have been in past generations. So the resistance is just getting a little bit of inflation with the HP. And then type rearrangements, they have called this category. Basically, fairy Pokemon are gone. They're gone. They're getting retyped as psychic Pokemon. So if you like the pink cards, that is unfortunate because they are no longer. They've been around since the X and Y series. Uh, Pokemon, I think, had 10. Previously, we had 11 different types of Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game and nine different types of basic energy. It's been that way since the X and Y series with the introduction of fairy type energy and fairy type Pokemon. The game is being simplified to only have 10 different types of Pokemon and eight different types of basic energy. And it looks like the fairy type Pokemon will be recast as psychic type Pokemon. And to balance out the types, 
Poison Pokemon will now be recast as Dark type Pokemon. And this is not the first time that Poison has switched teams in the Pokemon trading card game history. At first, you may remember Fossil Muck was grass type. It actually, Poison Pokemon spent a while being grass type and then somewhere along the line switched to Psychic and now they are being tossed to Dark. So Poison Pokemon have been switching uh, types here as long as the Pokemon trading card game has been around. So it's not something unheard of to have fairy type Pokemon be recast as psychic types. And I think generally speaking, if this is to make the game more balanced, make the types more balanced and more represented and uh, make the game easier to test and easier to, um, I guess, easier to, to make work, then I'm fine with it. I think that that, uh, that makes sense. Now, uh, it is unfortunate, you know, a few years ago, we get the fairy types and then they're back out. But I think that we have to just trust the developers of the game that this is being made for the best interest of the game as a whole. I mean, I don't really know what it is like to be in the R&D teams, you know, be on the R&D teams of a game like this and have the behind the scenes look at, you know, what really goes into making this game function. So I think that it probably makes sense if, uh, you know, from a design, a card and game design standpoint, having 11 different types of Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game, being able to simplify that to 10 is going to make the game, uh, I guess, uh, easier to navigate for a lot of players and, you know, may end up being better off in the long run. I mean, it doesn't seem like too long ago that we had a psychic guard of war, so it should all kind of make sense. And I think that psychic type uh, is a fair type to kind of cast the fairy types under. I am looking forward to having my first psychic type Clefable. That should be pretty cool. And all in all, I think it'll be fine for the game. And I'm sure that that decision was not made lightly. A lot of cards are getting erratas. So this is a new thing. A lot of text and kind of grammar changes coming to the Pokemon trading card game with the Sword and Shield expansion. A lot of up to wording being used. So energy retrieval, you don't have to get two energy from your discard pile back to your hand. If there are two, you can now do up to two basic energy. And same with Palpad. You can now shuffle up to two supporter cards from your discard pile into your deck. You no longer have to do both. And I think that that flexibility is just good for the nature of the game and good for, you know, uh, making skill intensive choices. A lot of times, if you're using Palpad, you may only want to retrieve one supporter from your discard pile and you don't have to clunk up your deck with a supporter that you don't want to see. And I think that that kind of decision making is overall good for the game. They are changing the middle of the turns, you know, so that time between players' turns is now called the Pokemon checkup phase. In the Pokemon checkup phase, you check for special conditions in this order, burned uh, or poisoned, burned, asleep, and paralyzed. You check abilities and effects of trainer cards that happen during Pokemon checkup. You could choose to do this step before checking for special conditions. However, you can't mix the two steps. For example, you can't add poison damage, then apply an ability, then go back and check if a Pokemon is still asleep. So I guess that is just clarifying the order that things happen between turns and just making sure that that is all spelled out and the fact that it is called Pokemon checkup does kind of key to the fact that you're going to be checking for special conditions, which is what happens most often between turns. Abilities will sometimes also trigger between turns, and it looks like, and uh, as well as trainer cards, and it looks like a lot of those things can happen either before the special condition checks or after the special condition checks, but it can't be in the middle of the special condition checks. And they're also changing the language from healing to recover, you now recover uh, 30 damage or you recover three damage counters instead of healing three damage counters. And they're just doing that to, I think, uh, just kind of simplify the language that is used across the Pokemon trading card game. And then they are, you know, removing a lot of unnecessary text. Uh, some abilities used to say that you could use them before you attack. That's obvious because you can't use an ability after you attack since attacking ends your turn. So they're going to remove some of that obvious kind of redundant text that doesn't need to be on cards anymore. 
And that's about it. Overall, I'm excited about the direction of the game, and I think that the designers of the game definitely have the best interest of the game and the players at heart here. And affecting the way that the first turn plays out, I think that it's, uh, it is good for the game overall and is going to, like they said, cause some more skill-intensive choices happening about not only deck building, but whether or not you choose to go first. And I think that previously it wasn't a really serious consideration as to whether or not you were gonna choose to go first in a game, but now that might actually change. And I think that the more choices that you know come up in the Pokemon trading card game, the more opportunities there are for skillful decision-making and for skill to decide the outcome of a match. And the more opportunities there are for skill to decide the outcome of a match, the better off things are. So I think that not all decks will choose to go second, and some decks will still choose to go first, and I think that that variety is overall going to be best for the Pokemon trading card game heading forward, and I'm excited to see what kind of changes that makes to our new format coming up this next month. Thank, thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tricky Gym, where I stream Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. Also, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all of your Pokemon trading card game singles. And uh, yeah, y'all take it easy and have a good one. Peace.